Uh, respected uh, principal, uh, dear vice principal and uh, head of the department of zoology, uh, our correspondent of uh, our college, uh, faculty members, participants of uh, this uh, international workshop, good afternoon to one and all. So we begin uh, uh, the proceedings of uh, this international workshop. Let me now uh, call upon uh, the head of the Department of uh, Zoology and Research Center and uh, also the vice principal of our college, Dr. Uh, G.D. Biji, to uh, welcome the gathering. Uh, Biji sir, you are not audible. Sir, please unmute yourself. He has uh, unmute, he has unmuted, but I think uh, he has some problem with uh, the microphone. You are in the unmute position, but uh, your voice is not heard. Uh, Biji sir, can you try by removing the headphone and using the laptop audio? Can you try that way, whether it is possible? Sir. Ah, yes, sir. Okay. Ah, Mr. Sir, carry on. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. 
uh, respected resource persons, uh, Dr. Anand J. Kumar and Faroz Khan. Uh, sir, you can un, un, uh, you can mute the other system, okay. the audio in the other system. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, beloved correspondent advocate Raja Durai and principal Dr. K. Paul Raj and IQAC coordinator Professor T. P. Thomas and the convener of the webinar Ms. Adeline Anita and professors, students and participants. Warm good uh, good afternoon to all. I am extremely honored to have this opportunity to welcome you all in this webinar. Our college, Nature Memorial Christian College, was established in 1964 to provide quality education. Beginning with a few courses, now our college has gone on to provide not only graduation courses, but post-graduation as well as PhD courses. Now the student strength of about 3,800 and 188 teaching staffs are working. Department of Zoology was established in 1966 with a BSc degree course in Zoology. Then in 1992, we introduced MSc course in Zoology. Later in 2018, Manon Maniam Sundarnar University recognized our department as a research center. Now, we all are facing unprecedented times due to COVID-19. The disease associated with virus pandemic sweeps globe. In this unprecedented COVID situation, today the Department of Zoology and Research Center, along with IQAC, organized this webinar, international workshop, this workshop on international on national statistics. National Statistics Day is an international day that takes place annually uh, 29th of June. The concept proposed in 2017 by, by government of India, the day is absurd to popularize the use of statistics in everyday life. Today, now nearly 2,000 participants from different colleges and different parts of India and other countries also participating in this webinar. Biostatistics is a branch of biological science which deals with the study of and methods of collection, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. The biological research in uh, and, and other field also. Biostatistics is also called as biometrics. In biostatistics, the statistical methods are applied to solve biological problems. Basic understanding of biostatistics is necessary in biological science. That statistics helps the biologist to understand the nature of variability and helps deriving general laws from small samples. In this difficult pandemic time, this topic is more relevant, interesting, and meaningful. Once again, I congratulate the organizer for organizing this workshop. First and foremost, I like to welcome the resource person for today's program, Dr. Anand J. Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Marine Biology, King Abdul Aziz University, Saudi Arabia. He is going to give us a talk on biodiversity study and statistical approach. We are grateful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation. We welcome you, sir for this workshop. Now I like to welcome our chief other resource person for today's program, Dr. Feroz Khan, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, the Abdul, uh, Abdul Hazim College, Ranipet District, Tamil Nadu. He is mm -hmm. going to give us a talk on handling non-detects. We are very grateful you, to you, sir, for accepting our invitation. We welcome you, sir, for this workshop. Our correspondent, advocate Rajaturai, is a prominent practicing lawyer. His contribution is unique and extraordinary to this institution. We thank you for your support, love, and inspiration. We welcome you, sir. It is most honor and my privilege to welcome our principal, Dr. K. Paul Raj, and his dedication, passion, and vision are helping our college to reach greater heights. <laughs> He's encouraging all to conduct such programs. We welcome you, sir. 
I welcome the IQAC coordinator, Professor G.P. Thomas. He is an, an active and dynamic person. He is coordinating today's workshop. And we welcome you, sir. Now I welcome Adeline Anita, the workshop coordinator. She organized today's workshop nicely. And I welcome you, madam. Finally, we heartily welcome all the teaching staff of NMCC and other professors from different colleges, uh, from different states, and the students and the other participants. It is good to see you all. Once again, I welcome you all for today's workshop. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh... Dr. G. D. B. G., the Vice Principal and the Head of the Department of uh, Zoology for uh, the welcome address. Now, uh, now let me uh, uh, request uh, the Principal of our college to give uh, a Principal's address in this gathering. Yes, uh, thank you, Tibitsa. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most respected and uh, Beloved resourceful resource person of this today's international webinar, Dr. A. Anand J. Kumar and Dr. Yam Parosh Khan, correspondent of our college advocate L. Rajadurai, organizing secretary, who is the head of the department of zoology and research center. Also, our Vice Principal, Dr. J.D. Biji, convener of the today's program, Dr. Adlin Anita, IQAC coordinator, Professor T.P. Thomas, collaborating this special program on this day, faculty members of our NMCC college, and also teaching faculty attending this webinar from various countries and research scholars and students. Good afternoon to all of you. I welcome you all on behalf of the NMCC family for this workshop entitled on Current Trends in Biostatistics. Dear friends, it is our regular practice to celebrate various international and national days recognized globally as well as government of India. Such one important day, that is National Statistic Day, which is celebrated 29th of June every year on the birth anniversary of late Professor P.C. Mahalaja Nobis, who is the father of Indian statistics. Friends, all of us know statistics is a, one of the important classical subjects being used by almost all the faculty, especially in the research activities for collect by collecting the data and analyzing the data and bring one conclusion we need uh, the principles of uh, statistics not only that statistics helps in forming economic plans and uh, policies it presents facts in precise and uh, definite system. Statistics plays a vital role in the health field and helps conduct social surveys. It is also an essential part of mathematics. For every important days, either the government of India or UNI recommended some theme in order to celebrate a particular day, especially 2021 National Statistics Day has one theme that is 
end hunger, achieve food security and improved nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture, mainly focusing on the food security and agriculture. The Department of Zoology is concentrating the topic biostatistics, that means under which two important topics being chosen, biodiversity study, a statistic approach, another one handling non-detects. I hope in this webinar, many teaching faculty and research scholars are attending. Definitely the presentations given by are being given by our resource person will be enriched the knowledge on the uh, statistics, especially biostatistics, especially the life science. On behalf of the management and my own behalf, I extremely thankful to the organizers the Department of Zoology and Research Center, Dr. G.T. Biji, who is the vice principal, and also the convener of the today's workshop, Dr. Adli Danita, then the IQAC coordinator, Professor T.B. Thomas, who is coordinating all these webinars and also the other academic activities. I thank one and all. Wish you a happy and a blessed day. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, dear principal, uh, for uh, the nice words uh, talking uh, about uh, the importance of uh, National Statistics Day uh, during this occasion. Uh, now, let me uh, invite uh, the webinar coordinate convener, uh, Professor Adlin Anita to introduce uh, our first uh, resource person. Good afternoon to all. It's my immense pleasure to welcome our resource person, Dr. M. Peros Khan. He is currently working in the Department of Zoology as Assistant Professor. See Abdul Hakim College, Mail Visharam, Rani Pit District is an experienced person in outcome-based education and using various interaction teaching methodologies. And he also uses various advanced statistical methods for non-detects and environment analysis. Based on the training he got from BRC Mumbai, he graduated two master courses, zoology from Scott Preston College, Narad Koyal, and marine biology and oceanography from Anamala University. He completed his PhD from Scott Preston College, Manamanim Sundanar University, Tirunelveli. He has qualified SLET during 2006. Previously, he worked as assistant professor of advanced zoology and biotechnology in the Department of Biology at Sadat Abdullah Appa College, Tirunelveli. He completed the PG diploma in nanotechnology from LSFI, India. However, his area of research includes biodiversity, environmental impact assessment, pollution monitoring, risk assessment, and radiobiology. He worked as JRF and SRF for a period of five years in BRNS funded project on Kudumkulam baseline studies and promoted up to postdoctoral fellow. Is a member of Health Physics Society USA and the Marine Biological Association of India, Kochi, International Union of Radio Ecology, Royal Society of Chemistry and Omics USA. To his credit, he has published more than 30 international papers in reputed journals and his articles published in Journal of Environmental Monitoring is considered as hot article in 2011. His H index is six and I10 index is five. He has been embedded editor of many environmental related journals of Elspur, Springlink, 
and some other. Some of them are Journal Marine Pollution Bulletin and Journal of Environmental Radio Activity and Environmental Monitoring and Assessment. In person, it is a diamond polished by the society. On behalf of everyone, I'm very proud to welcome you, sir. I hand over the section to you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, good afternoon to all of you. And uh, thank you, Professor Adlin, for giving me a, a brief introduction. First of all, I take this opportunity to thank the correspondent secretary of NMCC College, the principal of NMCC College, the head of the Department of Zoology, NMCC College, and the convener, Professor Adley, for giving me the uh, opportunity to share my experience with all, all this good gathering. So now I will uh, start my presentation and I will share my screen. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, first of all, uh, all should bear with me because here there is some uh, problem with the electricity from the morning. And sometimes if my laptop goes off, I will be connecting with you in my mobile. Okay. Okay, uh, today my topic of interest is introduction to data quality assessment and handling non defects First, when I am speaking with the convener, I thought of giving a uh, short talk uh, only on handling non defects and, uh, and sometimes it will be a little advanced to get understand. So what I did uh, that uh, my my presentation should be get benefited for uh, all the research scholars, central doing students, PhD, and people uh, who are uh, writing for projects as well as publications. So first, what I will do, I will tell the importance of uh, data quality assessment. Quality assessment in biology or in whatever science it may be is utmost needed in the present scenario because even though we learn by the life science or biologists learn statistics from the UG many of the people found difficult to apply it in their research because you do the, uh, uh, it's a mathematics, a branch of mathematics, but it is not like that. Sometimes, even though when they are using, they are not knowing that whether they are properly using the various statistic, uh, statistic or whether they are properly uh, processing their data. Because if there is any bias, if there is bias, and there is uncertainty, then you cannot report your biological data. So based on this, the learning outcomes of my presentation will be, at the end of this presentation, you will be able to explain why DQA is important and how it can be applied to your research. What are the five, list the five steps of data quality assessment? and the, how to evaluate the applications of DQA, then how we can apply or interpret the basic statistics and simple graphs, and to know some important software tools. So what is meant by data quality? Intended use of data. If you get a data from your research, whatever data, you should know how to use that data. 
data also has some important quality for example for me some data may be high quality data or good data for some purpose but it will be a bad or low quality data for others so before doing any research you have to plan accordingly what i should do so what is data quality assessment it is a scientific as well as a statistical evaluation to determine if data is adequate for scientific use okay normally if anybody is doing research or going to do any research or writing project they should know about the research life cycle so in the research life cycle these are the various steps first you have to plan for data collection and set data quality objectives then you have to apply you have to perform these objectives and you have to decide the acceptance criteria assumption then only you can go for collect data assemble the data according to the previous plan and perform the assessment as per the plan then you have to verify whether the my data meets acceptance criteria then if my data it is accepts get access or accepts then only you can do the statistical methods if you do a proper statistical method only then only you can get a wonderful product or a, you can make some decisions if you fail in any of this then your output will be zero so when to perform this dqa so dqa can be performed whenever you make a decision or if you want to estimate something or for your research it may be new data to be collected that is the primary data you have to collect or it may be a secondary data and it's already available so this is the proper planning graph so first planning what you will be plan you will systematically plan the data quality then you will be implementing the field data collection then you will go for quality assessment and quality control activities then you have to assess the validation and verification of your data what are the data what are the inputs in the right hand side routine data evaluation data so data validation verification you have to verify the measurement performance you have to verify measured procedures then validate then you have to go for data quality assessment then only you, have, you can get a successful conclusion so there is three different uh, meaning one is verification versus validation versus assessment normally if, uh, if a person doing a research he may be new to statistics or the first year during his uh, post work the student or a researcher he may not know what to do whether he is collecting data or doing research for his verification process or validation process or assessment he may do some basic statistics he will calculate mean median mode standard deviation then after he will do some statistical test like regression analysis or he can go up to anova but he may not be knowing whether he is doing the correct test or not because each study has a different assumptions and different objectives for example if you are going for a contamination study or if you are going for a pollution monitoring you cannot apply all the statistics because the study aim is different it may be a measurement of water samples from a pond or it may be a measurement of pollution or trace elements from fishes in the pond or whatever it may be the aim objective is different based on the aim objective and plan you have to apply the specific correct statistical measures otherwise if you do something and if you report something then you are going to produce a wrong data so in very in high impact factor journals 
or uh, when you go for a presentation in uh, many project presentations like dst they will mainly note for this whether it is a plan whether this statistic or this measure can be used for this study whether uh, alternate measure is used or whether the strong statistic is depicted for this if you do a wrong if you predict a wrong statistical method for some other study then your paper or your uh, uh, thesis or your project proposal will not be accepted because it is wrong so the first one is data verification so the verification is the evaluation for completeness or correct or confirming or compliance whatever what is data validation for example a method or a procedure or a contract thing whether it is valid then both of these has to be tested for the assessment so these are the five important rules or thumb rules or steps for a data quality assessment so say similar to what you do in your research for data also you have to go according to this this five steps only so what is the first step review the objectives of your study and plan the sampling design the second one is conduct a preliminary data review for example nowadays in dst or dpt whenever you go for a project they are asking whether you have done any preliminary study that is because of this second point now it is gold to work the third one is select the statistical method here you have to select correctly what is your study for what you are studying what you are measuring whether it is for valid a valid duration or it is only for the verification it is a environmental study or it is a lab oriented study for all these type of studies there are different statistical tests so here you have to decide in the step 3 what is this statistical method i have to do so if you select a statistical method then you have to verify the assumptions of the method here only in the step 4 only many of the researchers make problem so each test have its own assumption so these assumptions has to be correlated with the assumptions of your research study otherwise it is a complete failure it is proper if your assumption match with your both of the assumption matches then only you can draw conclusions from the data or you can bring out a wonderful result next so see this this is very very important so step 1 you may be doing step 2 you may be doing and step 3 you may be selecting some test with sometimes it may not be the test for your study then you have to verify the assumption if the assumption is wrong then you have to go back where will be the problem now it may be the problem with the scope of your research or it may be about the data you are there will be a error in the sampling methods you have to modify the data the data may contain some extreme values that i will be uh, coming i uh, explaining you at the end the transform the data there will be non data there will be some problem in the data then or uh, there may be a wrong thing you may be selecting the wrong statistical test if it is yes then you can draw conclusions so there are two views in a data quality assessment so why you are applying statistics or bio statistics in research what is the use or essence of bio statistics can anyone tell me what is the essence of bio statistics hello 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 sir uh, can anyone tell me what is the essence of statistics or what is the importance of statistics in biology because after a good lens i think 
if i take uh, uh, this type uh, the wall may be get bored or sleepy so i want uh, to interact yeah to make some decisions to make some decisions or you have to make some important conclusions so you cannot report anything in biology without statistics because nature is always variable nature has more variations so if you want to report something in biology you need a statistics if you need a statistics then you need a quality data so quality data you have to check for the assumptions if you make problem in the sampling then the whole process will go wrong if you make problem in the next uh, uh, descriptive statistics then everything will get wrong if you are not using the proper statistical methods then one, then your entire uh, plan will go off so you should be very careful now so now i will be i will be explaining each step one by one and if time permits i will be showing one example also so what is the step 1 review the objectives and data collection design so what will you do now you have to translate your objectives into statements that is nothing but the hypothesis so the hypothesis or you should estimate a goal what should you do what is my study every researcher should talk with their guides if they talk with their guides then they will be able to come out with some hypothesis what is my hypothesis what should i should do where i should do when i should do why i should do so what is the hypothesis or what is the goal after my study what is my next process you have to decide in this step one then this objective you have to convert into limits based on the probability you have to decide you have to avoid you have to avoid the bias you need an unbiased data you have to making some decision you have to avoid the errors so how should i uh, do then no then you have to review the sampling decide to avoid the uh, uh, errors to avoid the uncertainty which sampling decide i design i should whether i should go for stratified sampling whether i should go for uh, random sampling whatever may be you have to decide based on the topic you have to you have selected then you have to input what will you do then you have to write the project plan the project should have or research should have a project objective and the questions to be answered for example some area if it is contaminated by some pollution then for that what is the objective what are you are going to measure there what question i should answer or what question what answer i should need from that area then you have to decide the performance criteria you have to decide the field sampling plan if systematic planning was performed then you can answer to two questions one is the objective of the project and the acceptance criteria performance or decision making project if you have not planning or if you have not planned anything then you have to develop your own hypothesis based on the uh, previous publications you have to define the potential decision errors you have to specify the tolerable limits then you have to estimate what will be estimate what are the parameters you want and acceptance criteria for example you are proposing a hypothesis 
and uh, how will you decide an error? For example, I will let you know two things. One is an example to our hypothesis. There are two hypotheses you have me knowing. One is null hypothesis, you know, another one is alternative. For example, null hypothesis says that 2b is less than 50 and is equal to 8. What is the alternate hypothesis? True mean is greater than 50 mg per kg. Now, you cannot leave a hypothesis. You have put the hypothesis. Many will think, I, will, I have given the hypothesis. Ah, my work is over. Now I will do the test, whatever available. I will do the test which I like most. They will do some other test. They, they will do the test there, which is very easy. And finally, they come to their own conclusion. Now, see the example for decision errors. If the null hypothesis is that the mean is less than that value, there are two things. One is false rejection, and then another one is false acceptance. What is false rejection? Decide that the true mean of some chemical concentration is more than 50 mg per kg. When it is really less than 50 mg per kg, you may be observing or getting some values. For example, I am telling, if the mean is 50, lesser or greater, what is false rejection? The true mean is more than 50 mg per kg, which is actually less than 50 mg. What is false acceptance? The true man, the true mean is concentration is less than some value and it is really greater than 50 mg per kg. Here you have to make decisions. If you never do decision in this step, then your entire process will go wrong. Then in false rejection and false acceptance, if the problem in place in the future, you can set the values. Next, the first so the step one, Input is over. So now you have searched some hypothesis. Then what will you do? What is the next thing? Then I have to go for sampling. So you should have a planned sampling design based on the actual data. There should be the sampling should not give you more deviations. If deviations are more, then it will affect the analysis. What will you do? If the well project is well de defined, then verification of the hypothesis you have to make and you have to finalize the well-designed sampling method with less deviations. Then what will you do? You will go for preliminary data review. You have to conduct a review. Why you are going for preliminary data review? To avoid anomalies, to calculate statistical quantities and to make my data graphically present. Here, what, what are the things you need? You need a verified and validated data, quality data. Here, you have to perform the evaluations, corrective actions reports, and as well as the verification and validation. Now, in the review process of this step, you have to note many things. Sometimes in many biological studies, we depend on instrumentation te technique. Do you agree? Many things, many, many things you depend on instrumentation techniques. For getting a good results from the instrument, you have to calibrate the instrument. Many factors are there. The electricity should be proper. The sensor or whatever may be thing, the instrument should be proper. So now my question is, how far you, you are sure that your instrument you are using for your research gives good value or correct value? So here, problem arises from here. So you have to, if you fail in this, then there will be a big problem. So there will be variable detector tables. The analytical method, what which you done will not be correct. You would have wrong, you would have done a different methodology 
and you may be uh, processed the sample in a different method, but you will be using a different analytical method. So sample prepared for ICPMS should be analyzed in ICPMS. So samples prepared for uh, flame photometer should be analyzed in flame photometer because the methodology is different. So sample preferred for ICPMS, you cannot uh, count in uh, some other uh, instrument. Sometimes each same instrument might have a variable detection limits. Some instruments may be give you zero values. That's why here you have to review the quality methodology. Here comes the actual uh, methodology. What is the procedural methodology? Sometimes if somebody is going on uh, monitoring a lab or a contaminated uh, site or uh, whatever may be a company, he may be uh, emitting sometimes. There may be sometimes negative emission rates. Sometimes in a pond or in a polluted lake, your pH value exceeds 14. And sometimes the very important values will be in wrong reporting units. All this you have to complete before you go for the sampling. Now, after sampling, what will you do? You will observe something, you will observe some data. You may be noting your data in the note and then you will be doing these all, all these statistics. You have to do this basic statistical quantities. If you do these basic statistical quantities, you will be come to know the behavior of your data. It will tell you very easily whether the sampling method or the data you have collected is correct or it is deviated or more variation is there. What are the quantities normally we will be doing? Uh, you will be calculating the sample tendency, mean, median, mode. You will be relative step percentiles you will be doing. You will calculate rate variation, variation standard deviation. You will look for correlations, Spearman's run correlation and many researchers stop with this. They, tell, they will tell what they will tell. When papers come for review, you can find them. What they will tell, I have done a lot of statistical measures and my data is valid. So beyond the process, there are many other things. Now, after doing statistical quantities, you have to review these quantities. How we will review? Uh, do the data look reasonable? Do the values make sense? Are there any obvious anomalies? Are there any trends or patterns? Okay. So if you have any doubt, you can interact with me in between. So are there any obvious anomalies? In the anomalies part, I will be touching the non-details. Where there will be problem. You understand? Are you able to understand my topic? Yes, sir. Yes. It is difficult? It is boring? No, sir. Very interesting, sir. You are listening. You please take a note. This one you cannot get from any books. Okay. Before doing any research or if you are guiding somebody, if we go according to this plan, then your research will be a valid research. Over a data is important. Over a statistics, you will validate it. You will mean statistical quantities, basic statistics. In the actual scenario, in our presentation, okay, yeah, okay. Now, mean, median mode calculate, paniyachi, standard deviation calculate, paniyachi, correlation one calculate, paniyachi, and the research now, what he will do? Well, what shall I? What sir, I can do next? Oh, there are a lot of graphs. So in my thesis, I can put lot of figures and I can fill the pages. 
analog figures, look at that. Histogram frequency plots. Now here, there will be a lot of histograms and frequency plots in many pieces, many papers. Stem and leaf plot. Next one, box and whiskers plot. Ranked data plot. Scatter plot. Normal probability plot. Time plot. Posting symbol plots. Have you heard these type of plots? Uh, there are a lot of plots. You have to apply. And when you are applying, you are checking preliminarily whether my data is good, whether my sampling design is good, whether my topic of interest I have selected, and whether I am performing good sampling. Sampling a Panama data for now, Matigo. Now, you are, you are. Excuse me, Professor. Uh, uh, there are a lot of participants from uh, different states. So, uh, if you could use okay. English, it would be better. Okay, okay, okay. Now, after plotting this graph, you have to review once again. Do the data look reasonable? What is the distribution of that data? It is asymmetrical. It is bimodal, or there are extremely high or extremely low values, or there are any obvious trends. Have you looked? For example, if you get some data, if you get a 30 data so far, whether you have looked any extreme values, extreme values on the both side of the data in a well shape, I will show that. Then, after the graphical uh, publication, then you have to check for three important things. One is the data distribution, then the potential outliers, and then comes the non detects This is very, very, very important. Many of the people, they miss the number two and number three. They will come up to distribution. And the, if the distribution graph is OK, then they will stop with that. They will calculate a p-value and tell my distribution is okay. But many statistical tests try to adjust your data to fit into a distribution. That's all. What is the statistical test to do normally? They try to adjust the variability and they try to fit inside your distribution. That's, that is the, all this test too. But in your data, there may be two important things. One is potential outliers, and another one is non detects Then you have to select the distribution. What are the probability distribution? Many normal distribution. This is very common type. Normally, you have to go for normal distribution. There is T distribution. There is central limit theorem. And if your data is, does not, if it is original data, and if you are 95, 99% confidence, my data is original, but it does not fit into normal and day distribution, then you can opt for log normal distribution. After distribution analysis, you have to select the methods. Now only the real scenario comes. What are the methods? Test for mean. One sample T test is there, Wilcox and Sign test, Chen test, single proportions, percentile, one sample proportion test, test for median and test for confidence intervals. If you want to compare two means, two sample T tests, equal variance, and another one important new test is Sutterwitz test for unequal variances. Then if you want to compare two proportions, you can go for two sample proportion test. If you want to compare two populations, you have to go for Wilcox and Rand test or quantile test. If you compare several population, then you can go for Dunnett test. Or you can estimate, or you can go for regression analysis, or you can go for time series analysis. Here, based on the objective, based on the project plan, you have to select the exact statistical measure you want in your plan. 
simply don't do all the things. So after this test, what are the assumptions? Uh, you will be coming to know the distributional form, the test the independence of the data, the dispersion characteristics of it. Hello. Hello. Okay. The distributional you will be you will come to know the distributional form, independence of your data, the dispersion characters of your data, the homogeneity of your data, and randomization of your data. So, for example, if your data has a non-retype, only few non-retype and no outlier, then only you can test one sample T test. If your sample has or data has many non-detects and outlier data, then you cannot apply one sample T test. In this condition, if a data having these type of anomalies, and if you go for this one sample T test, then the answer or the conclusion what you are producing is wrong. Okay. Coming to step four. Now verify the assumptions. Now you are going to compare the assumptions of your statistical method with the assumptions of your research plan. So verify the assumptions, perform test for the assumptions. If necessary, if your assumptions fails, then you have to correct, you have to go back. The first picture, if you remember the first picture, that, that point is coming here. You have to go back and do a resampling or whatever. Way. So in distribution assumption, in the previous slide I, I told, one is outlier data or one is non-data. I told what is outlier. Outlier is some values that may be present on both if you arrange the data, array data, if you arrange in ascending order on both the end or in both the end of the distribution, there may be extreme values. For example, if I have in six values, two, three, four, five, three, these values are more or less near is near. But in between these five values, if I, if I tell a value of 50, and, in, and I add a value on the lower side, it is 0 0.1. So now our data look like 0 0.1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 5, 50. Then these two values are called outliers or extreme values. And in some observations, there will be instrumental based research studies you will get non detects because each instrument has a limit, lower limit uh, and a upper limit detection value. If your value comes below the lower limit of detection, that is called non detects It may be zero or it may be some lower value than the minimum detectable limit. In many studies, environmental studies, in immunology, even in microbiology, it is not easy to avoid these values because we do not know why it is coming like that, whether it is from the sample or even if the sample gives that value, what is the reason? So on that scenario, you have to correct. So there are many graphical methods. Shapiro will W test, distributional test, Philip and statistics, coefficient of variation, coefficient of skewness scrotosis, you can do range test, you can do goodness of fit test, like the chi square test, like that. Now, if you look at this table, there are the tests which I told before. See the sample size. Another one important thing which I left until now was. When you, in the step one, when you decide, when you talk with your guide, you have in your preliminary study, you will tell the sample size. You have to determine the sample size. For my study, 
how much of sample i should take it is not that uh, somebody told to take 100 samples it is not that somebody told to take 1000 samples it is not that my friend told to take two samples you have to determine your sample size in this step one here based on the sample size there are many tests shapiro will test less than or equal to 5000 this is one of the highly recommended distribution test then comes the philippian statistics okay less than or equal to 100 skewness test if the sample size is greater than 50 then only you can apply skewness and kurtosis studentized range test less than or equal to 1000 Gearies test greater than 50 size square test you can apply it is for large data Daily force Kulmakarov test, if your sample size is greater than 50, if your sample size is less than 50, then you cannot apply Kulmakarov's Munar test or Gary's test or that test. That is also very important. You would see the note, the necessary sample size depends on the number of groups formed when implementing this step. Each group analysis should contain at least five observations. Sometimes you may do in some laboratory exercises. They may be mosquito experiments. The students will be uh, finding very difficult. So how to determine my size? What should be the group size? So it should be minimum five. So this just to show you how the normal distribution looks and how the log normal distribution looks. So we want only normal distribution. We want our data data to fit into normal distributions. So now in very in many statistical uh, softwares, there are inbuilt uh, bootstrapping methods. What uh, if you know the minimum and the upper limit of the data, if you are confident, then the software itself generates uh, more numbers, random numbers. When the sample size get increased, your data automatically fits into normal distribution. Before doing any uh, statistical uh, calculations in uh, softwares, you should know the assumptions of the test. Then only it will be meaningful. Yes. See, following the previous slide, test for trend. Many of the people may be studying seasonal variation, uh, many uh, trend analyses. What is the trend of COVID infection or vaccine? Whatever may be. In that type of study, you have to go, you can go for regression based method, sense slope estimator, seasonal Kendall slope estimator. Then you have to go for hypothesis test for trend also. See, there are many conditions. One observation per time period for one sampling location, multiple observation per time period for one sampling location multiple sampling location with multiple observations and one observation for one station with multiple seasons. Here, there are two tests. For the above one and two, you can go for man Kendall test statistic. And for the below, if seasonal, you can go for seasonal man Kendall test. After doing all these tests, you have to determine and find out what test that satisfied my assumption based on a significant level. Now, now comes the outliers. See, many papers are in articles. I could see that many of many people they won't they don't analysis, they don't care about the outliers non detects But it is very important. See, if there is a zero value or if there is an extreme value, or if there is a non-detect in your data, then before going to step three, which I told previously, you have to perform all these tests, this step two itself. Okay, see, there are different tests, extreme value test, discordance test, Rossner's test, Walsh test, see the sample size and see the assumption of normality and see for multiple outliers. So you have to do this test 
correct your data and then you can go for step 3 otherwise your result will be wrong then there are tests for dispersions like f test confidence interval for single variance f test for equality of variances parallel test for equality of two or more variances lebanese test for two or more variances these are some or if or finally the researcher comes and says to me that sir i have done all the tests but nothing work out it is not following any distribution it is not satisfying any assumption then only you can transform then only you can opt for data transformation what are the different types of data transformation you can do log the transformation square root transformation inverse sign and box box transformation these all these transformations the softwares the statistical softwares they have now coming to the value below the detect limits what is uh, detection limit or value below the detection limit in any chemical analysis if my value falls below the detection limit in my analytical procedure that is called below detectable limit it is non detect or non detects rather maybe zero or it is not present okay it is called a censored data that is very important so censored data if you find the censored analysis then it will if you never attempt to solve or correct this then it will spoil all your results with non detects you cannot calculate mean median mode many people calculate mean median mode with non detect they replace the zero or they put zero see how a error it won't fit any distribution now what will you do there are certain other type of means arithmetic like arithmetic means this means will correct this data suppose for example if i am collecting a sediment sample 3000 meters down the ocean floor it is very difficult to reach sample or whatever maybe so in the preliminary study if i uh, if i uh, correct or if i satisfy the sampling size and I, if i measure the get minimum and maximum limit and if i am getting many ideal values or empty values then i cannot go for further sampling it is very difficult in that condition also you can apply these type of statistics okay there are some methods commonly used methods substitutions method the substitution method is selected by many softwares they will substitute uh, some zero values or half of the empty values other than that there are some proper field methods one is the cohen's maximum likelihood estimator or cohen's mean then there is a mean called trimmed mean then there is another mean called winsorized mean next one is atchison's method or kaplan mean or mean these are new means some you may not be heard before many of you so how this is what is that use of this means ah uh, in if your data has non detect or sometimes are outliers you cannot apply normal mean median mode in that condition you have to correct the data with this statistic and then only you can perform all further analysis sometimes the non detects will be very high if i am having 10 values of five values are zero means 50% non detect okay sometimes a data it may be very very important data it may contain 80% non detect in that scenario you cannot apply the mean which i have told you you have to go for proportion test for proportion you can report you can report the values only with the percentiles fifth percentiles ninth fifth percentiles okay so based on the coefficient of variation you have to decide okay 
then coming to the last step draw a conclusion from the data so now if you have done everything in a proper way and you have got very good results now you can 100% you can conclude or you can make or you can make the presentations to your higher social authorities or mps or and you know i have the data the data it is already it is a quality data why it is called the quality data because i have properly followed these five steps correctly after that i have checked myself and finally that's why i am giving to you so perform calculation of the statistical method then your results will be evaluated and you can draw the input okay so there are many softwares spss is there and uh, stat graphic is there some of the softwares which perform these type of statistics are data quest i think data quest is uh, upgraded to pro qcl5 you can download and it is very easy and uh, s plus is there so see software could be used on any data whether the assumptions are verified or not before going to software you should know what is your assumption otherwise don't go okay then evaluate who will evaluate the results now as a researcher as a project uh, doing project investigator and what and practical significance the, the dbt or they will they will be noting the practical significance political social factors ngos will uh, review evaluate your results politicians will evaluate your results and they will tell wow it's a very good data you have done it properly and contextual significance then if that is over that evaluation part is over then you, that is the decision the final product is the decision so i think i have completed my presentation atlin thank you sir for giving an excellent idea about the usage of biostatistics in our research so we will have the question and discussion section now so participants can unmute and ask or you can put it in chat box I think many of you may have bored in this afternoon. <laughs> Or it would be more informative. Any questions up there, Adlin? Uh, the participants can post your questions in the chat box, or uh, you can uh, unmute. Uh, you can unmute now, and you can ask the questions also. Kindly post your questions in the chat box, or uh, you may unmute. Uh, Uh, good afternoon, sir. I am Kannada Hasan from Kannada Sami Kannada College. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, I have a Windows 7 laptop. Okay. The SPSS package does not support uh, that system, sir. Uh, what can you do? Then you have to upgrade your system, sir. If everything is upgraded, then uh, you should also upgrade. <laughs> Even I have also the same problem. Okay. So Windows 7, 8, it is not supporting. Uh, which no. which one is so? Uh, so let let us do version, sir. Your uh, yeah, I am using using 21 SPSS 21. Okay, 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 sir, okay, sir. Thank you, sir.
good afternoon sir good afternoon dr faraz khan good afternoon sir this is dr marimuthu yes yes sir sir uh, you mentioned that uh, the ph one of the slide yeah yeah so the ph will go more than 14 yeah yeah what condition sir the ph will go as usually the ph ranges from 0 to 14 yeah any cases some... the ph will beyond 14 yeah yeah okay what would be the reason sir how how, how much will go maximum it will not go up to it it will be like 14.2 14.3 okay sir yeah that is maybe an error that may be an error what i am going to coming to tell is that okay it may be the instrumental error unusually yeah 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 but okay. in many in one paper they have reported that okay, but sir. there is the paper also published but it is wrong okay sir all oh, right yeah, yeah, yeah. And one more question, sir. You mentioned that a couple of uh, non-detectable, non-detect uh, normalizing method. Yeah, yeah. One among the method is winsorizing the mean. Yeah, yeah. So where, what condition, what purposes we can use that winsorizing the mean? Yeah. Is there any, 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 yeah, any, sir, any, the, yeah, yeah, the, the end is, uh, should be between uh, 15 to 30 percentage. Okay. Uh, in that condition, we can use uh, winsorized mean. So 30 percent of observation, if you don't after, get, we can uh, use it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If your data have 15 to 30 percent of the data not detected, then you can okay. opt for uh, winterization. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It was, it was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Faraskar. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, sir. This is Dilshad Begum from Chennai, from uh, JPS College. Okay. So it was a very really wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm happy to... Uh, I mean, uh, I'm privileged to attend this uh, seminar. Thanks uh, for the organizers. And my question is, sir, actually, if, if at all, if any work related to ecology, say, for example, uh, some diversity studies or different type of population studies, and which type of statistics will be uh, apt for that, sir? Instead of going for deviations or correlation studies, uh, anything like this, which uh, statistical tool will be apt for studying the population's densities and diversities, sir. Yeah, that already in one slide I have showed for test for populations, uh, quantile test, uh, two land tests that are, I have already show, showed in one slide, I think. Yeah, comparing two populations and... Yeah, comparing two populations. I in think the ne next presentation will be entirely on this. On bi bi biodiversity, yeah. Sir, ecological indices also can be considered as a statistical uh, analysis. No, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There is a question in chat box. Sir, could you please suggest interpretation of outliers in the box plot. Yeah, yeah, you can very well interpret. Uh, you can, there is a software called uh, Pro UCL version 5. You can download it free. Uh, in that software, it will be like the data entry will be like a Excel only. In that, that software, after entering your data, there are, you have to perform this test that a trim the mean visualized. It gives all the results. Based on that, if you opt uh, box plot along with this ND, and without ND, it will give you a very beautiful box plot. Whereas in other softwares, you cannot get this option. Pro UCL 5. It is free to download and easy to install. Okay. Can you put it in the chat box, sir? Pro QCL? P R O U C L. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Test what I have explained uh, now, no, in this slide. All the, these type of tests you can 
obtained from that software even that software will help you to decide all these five steps that is the importance of that the program will study all these steps when you fed the if you feed the data it automatically tell you uh, whether it is good data or bad data outlier or there whatever it gives a summary sheet based on that you can proceed your research or you can be sampling or whatever maybe you can do not available free access sir it's a free access sir. free access free access it belongs to environmental protection agency united states environmental protection agency okay then uh, there is one question uh, in the youtube uh, should we follow any particular rule in fixing the null hypothesis it depends on uh, your study sir null hypothesis always it will tell null effect or equal uh, observe experimental data observed data whatever may be it has null effects that you have to decide sir whether for example if your pond system if there is some contamination for example if there is a manganese contamination if you think you found that some uh, that pond is already contaminated or there is contaminating source then you can do a preliminary study and you can measure the value and you can fix the hypothesis what is null hypothesis there is no effect of uh, what this manganese concentration in this pond or whatever it may affect maybe then alternate hypothesis will be no there will be effect that's all uh adeline madam is there any other questions to be answered no sir no so uh, thank you so much sir uh, for your uh, wonderful session uh, it was really uh, very informative and uh, there are a lot of uh, comments uh, from participants in the chat box also about your session that they really enjoyed your session it was such a valuable uh, presentation and this is the same comments that i have seen in the youtube also from the feedback given by uh, the participants okay thank you so thank you so much sir thank you so much so i think uh, now we'll uh, move ahead with uh, the second uh, presenter uh, now i request uh, dr uh, Ad adlin anita to uh, introduce uh, the next resource person it's my great pleasure to welcome dr a anand jay kumar assistant professor in marine biology of prince abdul asi university saudi arabia previously he was working as assistant professor in zoology st joseph college of trichy and as a science instructor in ministry of education maldives he completed his bsc zoology in uh, st john's college palamkote tirunelveli and he did his post graduate and mphil and phd in scott christian college nagpur tamil nadu india during his phd research he deposited brachiurian crabs in Nash natural history museum london and zoological reference collection raptors biodiversity museum singapore and marine research station maldives He is an accomplished writer with several published books and his credits. His ongoing works are many, uh, and I'm just uh, mentioning few of this uh, and few of his project that is culture medium quality control in a bac bacterial larval culture system using seaweeds as a biofilter. Then. a study on the taxonomy of the larvae of the mangrove crabs of the saudi arabia saudi arabia red sea then special temporal variation of micro phytoplankton dynamics in relation to 
increasing anthropogenic influence on a central Red Sea Creek, uh, then a taxonomy of the Bracurian and post larval stage collector from meroplanktons of the Red Sea, Saudi Arabia. He is a member of the Red Sea Biodiversity Project under the Faculty of Marine Science, King Abdul Aziz University, Saudi Arabia. In person to say, when he catches the crab, he furthers the world. I'm very happy to welcome such a sincere and dedicated person to this workshop. So I'm handing over this section to, to you, sir. Thank you so much for the introduction. And I thank uh, the principal, vice principal, correspondent, and the IQAC coordinator, and the coordinator of this seminar for giving me, giving me, giving me this opportunity. Uh, first of all, you know that uh, now within one hour, especially in statistics like subjects, it's very difficult to teach or uh, to give a le lecture. And I wonder how far it would be benefit to the participants. So first I planned uh, to select only one area of biodiversity instead of uh, explaining everything or you know pushing so many stuff in the brain within a short limited period of time may not be that uh, beneficial. So I selected only uh, one particular part and uh, to explain it in detail. It is uh, the application of multivariate analysis in biodiversity. Uh, but one question uh, came regarding this biodiversity and uh, some of them are very interested to know about that. So uh, let me give a full picture, uh, but as I already told you, this univariate analysis, I haven't prepared. I have uh, given priority to multivariate analysis. And uh, so in very short, I will uh, tell, even without PowerPoint slides, how to deal or carry out a biodiversity research or how to uh, analyze uh, bio uh, uh, data, uh, biodiversity data, uh, using uni univariate analysis also. Uh, without slides, then I will uh, go to the multivariate analysis in detail. And uh, biodiversity, uh, uh, it's uh, very difficult to define, in fact, uh, especially in you know, all ecological definitions, we say it, all things are very simple, but it's not like so. Even uh, it is very difficult to define the term habitat. So the term biodiversity, you know, ecologists felt very difficult to define. And uh, so in a simple way, I can say, if you take a habitat or a ecosystem, you know, how many different types of uh, species are there, you know, uh, that is, you know, uh, animals as well as plants. So uh, that we can say it is a biodiversity, especially when we talk of uh, rainforests, we say biodiversity is very uh, high, uh, high. The reason is, you know, in uh, 
uh, in a rainforest, so many species are there, comparing with the desert uh, ecosystem. And uh, why we are using uh, statistics uh, uh, to learn about or to interpret biodiversity studies? It's a very simple thing. You know, uh, so many professors are also attending this session as well as I feel some students also there. So, you know, I have to think of all types of participants. So some very simple examples also let me uh, give you. For example, you know, whenever we are studying, uh, whenever we make a study, you know, we give the results in values, it is very easy to understand. Uh, for illustration, you know, in our schools, you know, we teach after that, you know, we want to find out the learning outcome. To find out the learning outcome, what we do, we conduct a test, then we, you know, we give marks, then finally we give in total one particular value, uh, say out of 500, 450 or 350, you know, by these values, uh, we are understanding, you know, uh, how far, you know, the learning outcome has been achieved or uh, as far as the student is concerned, how much that teaching uh, efforts uh, has reached. Uh, in the same way, you know, we are studying uh, the biodiversity of uh, different uh, habitats. Uh, instead of telling, you know, uh, the habitat A, uh, the biodiversity of habitat A is higher than B, you know, I can make a statement. But if I give a value based on some statistical analysis, you know, it is very easy to understand and it would be very accurate. So, uh, we have so many statistical analyses. But the problem is, you know, all uh, different uh, statistical analysis methods have some shortcomings. And especially this univariate analysis like ANOVA uh, or that type of things we are using, uh, they have some uh, very big disadvantages. So that is the reason, you know, we have to go for multivariate analysis. So I am going to explain you uh, why a multivariate analysis analyses are superior to univariate analysis like ANOVA and uh, uh, how to interpret our data and how we are applying uh, all the things I am going to explain you. Uh, but as I already told you, you know, within a short span of time, if I want to teach you know, uh, only uh, uh, limited, uh, uh, only one analysis if I take, and uh, if I try to explain a little bit thoroughly, it would be more beneficial because, you know, these type of uh, sessions, we require uh, more than one or two days uh, to give a very clear cut idea about everything, especially univariate and multivariate analysis. Analysis, if you're, uh, 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 doing, it may take uh, much time, uh, one or two days, then only we can uh, do something constructively. And as I already told you, you know, uh, univariate analysis, I did not uh, touch uh, in my PowerPoint, you know, I, I was uh, mainly, uh, I had a plan to focus on uh, multivariate analysis, that is also a break artist, uh, analysis based dendrograms and MDS. Only these two topics I selected uh, today. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, as some of the people are very interested and uh, so many are uh, involved in biodiversity researchers, uh, let me give a, a, a brief idea about, uh, you know, how to deal with the data. You know, uh, when you're talking of biodiversity data, first of all, we are collecting uh, uh, data uh, from the from a field or uh, from uh, an ecosystem or whatever it may be. After collecting the data, we are analyzing it. 
uh, how we are anal analyzing it. You know, generally we are uh, doing uh, uh, ANOVA uh, to find out whether there are variations uh, between different uh, habitats or uh, different ecosystems. And uh, for uh, ANOVA, uh, generally we directly give, uh, you know, feed the value uh, and uh, we find out whether uh, uh, significant variations are there. The probability value we say, uh, we see if it is zero, less, the, lesser than 0 0.05, we say the variations are there. And, uh, but uh, if it is uh, more than that, no variations are there. Immediately we come to a conclusion and I'm very sorry uh, that I haven't made a PowerPoint slide for that. So let me, without PowerPoint, let me try to explain you in a very simple way. Uh, uh, so many research papers, you know, that are published in uh, local journals, you know, they are uh, just uh, leading like that. Even some PhD thesis also I have seen uh, they are uh, doing like that. Uh, but, you know, well, we have to... Uh, ANOVA, we should not uh, biodiversity data, ANOVA results, you know, we should not represent as it is. First of all, you know, when you get a data set, you have to check whether uh, the data is normal, uh, is in normal distribution. If it is not in normal distribution, you have to transform it uh, for uh, find, uh, to find out normal distribution certain tests are there, you have to go for that test and you have to uh, find out, uh, uh, you have to uh, find out whether it is not uh, normally distributed or not. If it is not normally distributed, then you have to go for, uh, uh, you have to go for uh, transformation. You have to go for log transformation. Then again, you have to go for normality test. Then if it is, uh, Again, uh, the data is not uh, normalized, then you have to go for uh, uh, square root transformation. Still the condition is not improved, then you have to go for fourth root transformation. If all the things are not working out, then you have to go for uh, non-parametric test. Uh, this is the way of uh, dealing uh, with your data, you know, when we are uh, comparing uh, two places. And uh, as our uh, uh, Dr. Feraskan told, sometimes in the data, outliers also may be there. So uh, what statisticians are uh, telling, or in one of the papers uh, published in Crustacea, uh, what they are uh, telling, you know, with outliers also, they are conducting tests and they are giving result. Without outliers also, they are conducting tests and they are giving result. Because, you know, they are telling, you know, in nature, it is like that. For example, one species uh, may dominate uh, very uh, high. Uh, that is part of nature. So, uh, uh, certain, you know, according to the rule, you know, if there is outlier, we have to remove out outlier and we have to perform uh, analysis. Uh, but, you know, uh, in that case, you know, we are uh, misrepresenting nature. In, in nature, it is like that. So, what you have to do is, with outliers also you perform analysis, without outliers also you perform analysis. Uh, then after that, you give two results. Then let the readers, so scientific community, you know, people are only uh, learning, the, uh, reading that. So let them come to a conclusion, right? What to take or what not to take. Uh, so uh, uh, four or five data sets you are getting after that, you go for one-way ANOVA or two-way ANOVA. Then uh, you can go for three-way ANOVA also to find out the interaction of factors, uh, you know, but without four points, it's very difficult to explain. So I am very sorry about that. Um, then uh, biodiversity indices, then uh, using uh, so many softwares are there, uh, you know, I am using Primus, uh, biodiversity indices like uh, Shannon Weiner index, uh, or uh, even as uh, J prime, uh, those type of things also you can uh, find out uh, for the habitats. Then for these values also, you uh, you can go for ANOVA test, one-way ANOVA uh, or uh, two-way ANOVA test. You can find out uh, these uh, 
diversity uh, like uh, uh, H prime, uh, Shannon Wiener index, uh, is, is it varying in between uh, two uh, habitats? Uh, uh, that way you can do. Uh, then uh, um, Margalov uh, index uh, D, you can uh, find out species richness. Uh, like so many things and uh, this also based on you know, so many tests are there uh, and the biodiversity indices that that you have to decide uh, uh, what is the objective of your study then you uh, go to google or uh, take some study materials and what is appropriate you can study uh, the better thing is, you know, on the YouTube, all the, uh, there are uh, so many uh, types of, you know, for all the tests, some lectures are there. So you can take a better lecture and you can learn and you can do it uh, using SPSS or uh, especially for this type of biodiversity studies. Uh, primer is uh, very uh, helpful. And uh, uh, this, uh, like, Shannon Weiner index or uh, Margal of uh, spe uh, uh, species richness and all the things are you know giving an overall picture of that particular place. It is not giving uh, you know one single species contribution is not reflected in the result. You know that is the main disadvantage. So we have to go for uh, multivariate analysis and. Uh, Biodiversity, you know, I don't uh, give a big introduction and uh, because, you know, uh, these type of things are very uh, simple, even you can read if you download from Google, you can understand. So what are the types of biodiversity, genetic biodiversity, species biodiversity and ecological uh, biodiversity, uh, please, you can uh, uh, try to understand. Okay. Now, uh, I already told you uh, why we want to go for multivariate analysis. You know, uh, if, if you just finish your uh, biodiversity study using only ANOVA or T-test, you are giving a wrong result. You will give a total wrong result. Uh, actually, there will be changes in between habitats, but you will say, no changes are there because your result is telling like that. Another result is telling like that. Sometimes there may not be changes, but your result will say changes are there. So it is very dangerous. And uh, so to give uh, an accurate uh, result, uh, for example, you know, uh, some uh, studies are very serious. Uh, not for a fun we are making. For example, it's not like PhD thesis, just to get a, a degree. For example, uh, um, pollution uh, study, you know, based on that, you know, the government is going to take some decision uh, or uh, global warming, uh, that government is going to make some policies. That time, you are going to give a report. In, in reality, in your study sites, there may be some changes, but your result will say, no changes are there. Uh, uh, like that, you know, we may uh, misrepresent. So that is the reason, you know, uh, we need uh, different types of tests. As I already told you, all tests have disadvantages as well as advantages also. So uh, based on your advantage, you know, in our previous lecture also, you know, our uh, professor often used to say, uh -huh. you know, based on your uh, uh, objective, you know, you have to decide what type of just everything. Now, look at this table. This table is a very interesting table. You know, uh, I am going to do uh, ANOVA uh, using these tables. You know, species one, two, three, seven species are there. In plot A, species one is seven, species two is three, species three is two. Uh, here, uh, that uh, plot B, species 4 is 7, 5 is 3, and 6 is 2. You see, uh, 
same number but different species the same way in all the plots uh, you know same number you know there's uh, uh, 732 this is same but species is different so you see that plot a and plot b is totally different based on biodiversity it's totally different because species 1 is not at all present in plot b species 2 is not at all present in uh, plot b species 3 is not at all present in plot uh, b not at all present so in that case plot a and plot b is totally different but if you do anova do you know what will happen it will say plot a and plot b have no difference because it will take only 732 then four zeros then 732 zeros it will take that only but in reality these two plots are highly different so whenever you are doing a biodiversity study whether it is for your project or your phd thesis or your something you know some projects if you stop with or if you are satisfied with just anova you know you are giving a wrong result in reality your study site may be uh, behave in one way but your result will say your uh, study site is ecologically or you know biodiversity based it is uh, working in a different way and now let us see the anova result of this particular uh, particular study you know here uh, p value uh, is greater than 0.05 p value is greater than 0.05 uh, 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 that uh, it's one which is telling you know uh, the no changes are uh, there between different sites how funny it is right uh, so uh, so many studies you know so many research papers you know they stop with uh, you know biodiversity study means you know they just uh, do uh, they just uh, Uh, uh apply either tetas or uh, one way anova or two way anova then they uh, break at this uh, i'm sorry that uh, this uh, species richness and uh, h prime even as j prime only those values they give and they stop with that uh, but you know but in reality you know when we uh, study uh we are uh, uh misrepresenting your study site uh you know uh, uh, based on biodiversity so now i think you have understood why we want to go for multivariate analysis you know uh, why one way anova is not sufficient even that also this one way anova also without transformation as i already told you systematically your data sets uh, normality test you have to go for then after normality test if it is if the data is not normally distributed you have to transform it after transforming it you know log transformation is not working out you have to go for uh, uh, square root transformation if all the things are not working out please keep aside one way anova then you have to go for some non parametric test if you don't do that you know you are giving a wrong idea right if one your data is uh, not normal but without normality test if you are uh, doing one way anova sometimes really your site may not have changes in between two sites no changes may not be there but your anova result will be uh we will say changes are there why because you know uh, the data it's a problem with the data it is not normally distributed sometimes changes will be there your anova result will say no changes sometimes no changes will be there your anova result will say uh, changes are there right so uh one way anova also if you are performing you know without uh, finding out um 
uh, normality test you know if you are uh, representing your uh, answer your uh, uh, trying to interpret your data without normality test you are misguiding the scientific community uh, like that after that you know outliers also you have to check whether your data is having outliers all the tests you have to do it in a very systematic way and uh, as i already told you and this one way anova is having some dis uh, uh, so many disadvantages so we have to use one way anova also uh, it is also a very effective uh, statistical method there is no doubt one way anova is a very strong st one of the statistical methods uh, but you cannot trust one way anova alone uh, now look here uh, now uh, how uh, break uh, how uh, multivariate analysis break artist analysis based uh, you know uh, uh, cluster analysis and multi dimensional uh, scale these two tests how it is analyzing how they are working uh, look here now here 732 732 plot a and plot b are totally different based on biodiversity plot a and plot b are totally different based on biodiversity because species one is not present in plot b species two is not present in plot b species three is not present Likewise, species four is not present in plot A. Uh, species uh, five is not present in uh, uh, here and species. So totally, this species is uh, to totally absent here. This is not here. Anova is telling you know uh, no changes, but here totally different. Uh, now look at the plot here. Now uh, here is site A. Here is site B. Uh, now. Uh, here is uh, plot B, here is plot A, very far away, very far away. And uh, multidimensional scaling, if two points or if uh, two uh, is, uh, habitats or whatever it may be, two sites, if they are staying very close, which means biodiversity uh, based, you know, they are highly similar. For example, you take this plot B and plot C, they are highly similar based on biodiversity. If you uh, see this, uh, if you take my, my table, you can see uh, these two plots are sharing some, uh, so many species in common. So many species in common, right? Uh, so here, um, it is correctly representing, it is correctly, uh, correct representation of my study sites are given in this uh, uh, in the uh, in the study, so break at this analysis. That is the reason I told you, you know, today, you know, within one hour, I told you, you know, I can't uh, teach everything. So only one particular part I explained to you, and uh, how to interpret this data and how we are applying this data. You know, so many interesting things are there, and all the things we must know. How uh, you know this type of uh, you know. Uh, uh, statistical tools are explained. Now, look here. Now you take uh, plot uh, A and uh, uh, right. Uh, so what is the similarity between plot D and plot B? 54. Uh, like plot C and plot D. Okay. So uh, plot A and plot B. Look here. It's a very interesting thing. Plot A and uh, now plot A and plot B. Uh, the difference is zero. It is uh, very correctly showing the difference is uh, zero uh, that uh, analysis is telling. Uh, 
plot A and plot B, it is zero. See, that is a real reality. See, here species one, two, three. The, these three species are not at all present in plot B. But you look here, plot B and plot A, you know, the similar uh, biodiversity similarity is zero, right? So uh, this is the ingenious design of this break artist analysis. You know, we have to appreciate this statistician, you know, how uh, he has, uh, you know, uh, used his brain uh, to design this, you know, formula, uh, formula to uh, find out the value zero. Uh, so that is the interesting thing. Now, uh, this cluster analysis also, uh, when you see this is a plot A, plot A is standing alone, right? Because it is totally different from the other three sites. And, uh, you know, the uh, highly similar is plot C and plot B, because they are sharing uh, two uh, more species in common. In fact, this break artist analysis, uh, this you know, uh, presence of uh, similar species and the numerical abundance. These two factors are uh, influencing the values. Uh, you know, the numerical abundance, one species in what number in, in a particular uh, uh, ecosystem, then uh, uh, how many species are in common, then what is the abundance of those species, right? If the abundance of those species also uh, highly similar, then you know uh, here the similarity will, will cross even ninety percent or even eighty uh, percent or ninety uh, percent. Uh, that possibility is there. And um, now uh, you can uh, do it for uh, species also. You know there are seven species. Uh, in uh, plot A, plot B, uh, you know, how two species are similar based on uh, distribution. Uh, 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 species wise also you can uh, find out how uh, 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 two species are different. Uh, for example, let me tell you, uh, you take a uh, lagoon, you take a uh, lagoon, uh, two lagoon habitats and uh, open sea habitats, if you cumber with uh, uh, coral reef, in coral reef, you know, uh, more uh, sandits or uh, sandy traps are available. But if you take the uh, estuaries or uh, open sea, you will say you will get more proteins. So b based on the study sites, if you are uh, having more data from the coral reef sites, then, you know, the sandit species, uh, they will show more similarities because they are more abundant in your study sites. So they will have more similarities. So in uh, primer E, you can find out the similarities of species also. Now, what is the application of this study? So uh, till now I explained to you why we are using this break at this uh, based analysis, why it is very important. And uh, I already told you, you know, generally we are using ANOVA, uh, even though it is a very efficient, very efficient uh, uh, statistical tool, you know, it may misrepresents, misrepresent your study sites, or it may give a wrong result. That is the reason we have to go for break at this uh, analysis based MDS or dendrograms. Now, uh, the application of this uh, study, you know, why we are uh, doing, uh, why we are using this and uh, how we are using this everything, right? To cumber different sites, uh, to cumber different sites, we are using this study. And uh, here also this, uh, uh, you have to normalize this data. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, generally, um, the software itself will do all the works. Uh, uh, in the um, primer software, uh, generally they are uh, doing uh, square root transformation, uh, uh, the data. Before uh, uh, analyzing, uh, you know, you have to transform it, uh, square, root transform, uh, square root transformation, you have to do it. 
uh, why we are doing that you know generally if you take uh, data of uh, based on you know these biodiversity related data uh, animals and uh, plants perhaps everything uh, you know uh, that uh, one species abundance will be very high another species will be very rare another species will be very rare uh, so if five species are there one species you will get you know maybe 50 or 60 uh, or another species you may get only 10 another species you may get even one or two uh, as the generally uh, our data is having this particular character you know uh, we have to transform it so we have to transform it so the transformation will be done by the uh, software itself and now look here now to cumber different uh, study sites we are using break artist analysis you know uh, in the uh, primer software you will uh, get uh, primer past also you know uh, like so many softwares are there and how to do that um, you know uh, i am uh, telling you you know that uh, uh, just go to youtube you know how to use past uh, for uh, constructing uh, dendrograms and like that you just type some good uh, lectures will come you choose the best one and uh, you do that uh, i don't have any idea about that particular software but it's a free software past uh, you can uh, use the software i am using only uh, this, this particular software primer now look here after getting a particular result uh you know how to interpret this how to interpret this you must know how to interpret your result uh, now look here after interpreting you know uh, some uh, what your result is telling you know you have to uh, have a scientific look and you have to uh, look very deeply you know when uh, small changes are there and you have to find out. I think Henry Becquerel, I think uh, he was a scientist, a Nobel laureate. Yeah, I think he only discovered uranium, I think. Uh, you know, if I'm wrong, uh, please excuse me. And uh, what he did, you know, he put a small piece of rock in his dryer. In the same dryer, he put one film roll also. After some times, you know, when he took the film roll, you know, it was exposed, it was uh, useless and uh, first time you know he thought some problem with the film or something else then second time also when it happened he thought something must be wrong some radiation must have come from the rock and it must have uh, uh, you know spoiled the film and finally when he uh, did research and uh, he found out uranium in our radioactive material just like that you know the way we are looking that is very important so now we have to look at your result and that is very important uh, especially when you're writing a research discussion uh, you know that representing your data is very very important if you want to push your uh, paper to a high impact factor channel now look here uh, now here two clusters are formed at you know uh, this is 100 percent similarity you know around uh, you know uh, very low similarity level, right? Uh, around five or seven, two uh, clusters are formed here. Here, one group, two groups are formed. Now, in this, you know, all the beach habitats, beach habitats made uh, made one group, and reef and lagoon has made another thing, right? As I already told you, what is the meaning of that? and uh, break artist analysis you know this is done based on break artist analysis these are uh, based on two factors that is abundance and uh, commonness of species so if they have made uh, one group which means in these habitats you know uh, uh, you know, this particular uh, site and uh, this particular thing, all are carrying some common species and uh, this abundance also highly same. Now look at this two, these are very close. Uh, 
these uh, two habitats as well as season also they are very close which means these two in this particular site or in this particular season you know uh, the number of species and abundance are almost same you know the similarity uh, you know straight you draw a line this particular uh, this these two sides uh more than 85 85% similarity is there all right you just draw a line okay from here at 85% uh, similarity you know the north beach north beach you know uh, southwest monsoon southwest monsoon 2001 to 2002 3 right and this particular you know two years that same season you know a 90 percent similarity that uh, you know the brachyuran crab uh, brachyuran crab fauna is you know reflecting 90 around you know 85 percent similarity is there you know same type of species in almost in similar abundance you know that is the reason right then after getting a dendrogram you make a you will get some groups then after that you know when you are representing your data for a journal and to give a standard outlook you name the group in what way they are similar you find and you make a name instead of just giving this figure for example you look at beach habitats you know all the things you know the beach habitats made one group here right and the reef and lagoon made one group so i you know uh, told you know this beach habitat this is reef and lagoon habitat right uh, so just like that you know when you are giving a uh, break at this analysis result when you are giving this graph you know uh, what percent similarity groups different groups are formed or we, we say different clusters are formed and uh, after that you know uh, that a group based on what the groups are formed you can uh, give a name for that group so you know your uh, you know, result will be good right now look here uh, different you know to compare different sites we are using uh, we are using this particular test that is break test analysis based mds and uh, uh, MDS and this uh, figure, right? Uh, uh, this figure we are using. Now imagine, uh, now here, in between 0 to 100 meters, some sites, we have taken some data uh, in sites A, B, C, D, E, uh, like that, you know, you imagine you have selected a data. Then 100 to 200 meters uh, in this epipelagic region itself, uh, you have uh, taken some data, or uh, maybe plankton or whatever it may be. Uh, you have taken some data then be uh, below 200 uh, meters you have collected some uh, planktons then you are analyzing your data and uh, your mds result of course you can give site number or you can give different uh, you can give different shapes also uh, diamond shapes or whatever it may be right and uh, now look here you know uh, i did uh, some dummy data uh, for your uh, study uh, uh, to present uh, not original data some uh, dummy data when i gave right up to 100 meters you know all the sites one two three four five six seven eight all the things are have occupied one particular space in the two-dimensional space of mds two-dimensional space of this mds then between 100 and 200, you know, those sites occupied uh, another space, right? Say, for example, uh, here the uh, site 413, et cetera, et cetera, right? Then more than 200 meters, you know, another uh, uh, group has made. So this is showing a uh, spatial differences, you know, one particular area up to 100 meters those data sets are occupying a particular area in the two-dimensional space of MDS, right? 
this one you cannot uh, uh, find in cluster graph, right? Uh, that is the reason, you know, I told you, you know, different uh, uh, test uh, or different methods you can uh, take to uh, interpret your result. Uh, here, uh, in this cluster analysis, in what depth, you know, what groups are gathered, you can't find out. You can just say, uh, you know, the, these two are uh, very close together and uh, they are grouped together at 85% similarity level. You can tell like this only. But you see this MDS, uh, you know, uh, all the things are grouped together. You know, uh, you are getting a more clear picture, right? So when you are uh, representing, when you are representing uh, data uh, in MDS, two things you have to make clear. When two points are very close together, those two sites are, uh, those two sites are, uh, you know, biodiversity wise more similar. If they are very far away, this and this are very far away, which means, you know, in these two sites, type of species and abundance. As I already told you, Bray Curtis analysis is functioning based on two factors that is uh, 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 species type and uh, abundance. So if you take these two sites, you know, based on uh, species uh, distribution and uh, species abundance, both are totally different. Okay. Then same sites are grouped together, grouped together, right? So you can divide and uh, you can find out. So uh, to study your uh, sites very effectively, you can use this break at this analysis based um, uh, uh, cluster analysis as well as EMDS. Then here stress value is the if the stress value is zero, then this, uh, you know, statistical based, your uh, uh, ordination, what you've got, the graph you got is very accurate. If the stress value is more, then it is less accurate. But uh, generally in research papers, you know, uh, that reviewers are not very particular about this. So you don't need to worry about that. So uh, to check different the sites and the different uh, seasons uh, different seasons we are uh, studying uh, we are using uh, we are using this uh, break artist analysis based uh, mds and this dendrograms we are using that uh, then why we are using this um, uh, to test hypothesis and it's a very interesting thing you know, the ecology scientists and they always come with hypothesis. Okay. I think, uh, do you know what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is, you know, not scientifically unproved, you know, just uh, one idea which is just conceived in your mind. It may be like this, right? So that hypothesis. So once you conceive one hypothesis, then we are testing. We are taking data. Is this idea is correct? then we are collecting data. If substantial idea is supporting your hypothesis, then your hypothesis is becoming theory. It is reaching next level, theory. Then after that, you know, if the theory is also 100% it is proved, then it is becoming law, the law of gravitation, right? The law of thermodynamics, it is becoming loss. In biology, laws are very less, am I right? Even uh, Darwin, uh, Darwin's theory only, we say it is not uh, the law of Darwin's, right? So now we have conceived one idea, hypothesis. Some hypotheses are very interesting. And uh, now we are testing. So to test our hypothesis, so why I'm giving you is, you know, uh, all these ideas, you know, when you are using, uh, doing biodiversity studies, you know, uh, you must have one broad idea about uh, all the ecology works. So you can design uh, your work for your PhD students or your own works. You know, it would be highly benef beneficial. Right. Now, 
uh, here the uh, uh, this is a hypothesis uh, you know uh, now we are going to next level you know we are comparing two studies and we are interpreting our result that type of studies are not very interesting uh, not very interesting now we are moving little advanced we are going to uh, test our hypothesis right next level we are moving right so imagine we are uh, collecting some uh, uh, across the world you know uh, just from the pacific ocean uh, this corner to this corner you know the whole uh, area we are collecting data from 12 sites you know crustaceans we are collecting right now one hypothesis is that from uh, here to here you know when you, when you move from east to west or west to east you know the crustacean population is changing gradually gradually there is a change in crustacean population when we move from east to west uh, east to west this is a hypothesis this is a hypothesis now we want to prove our hypothesis right now uh, two or uh, three very interesting hypotheses i am telling you uh, for that, you know, we are using uh, this break at this analysis, you know, uh, we, we can uh, apply our ideas uh, to do that. Now look here. So we are collecting uh, data from site one, site two, site three, site four, site five. So 12 places we are collecting our data. Crustaceans we are collecting. Uh, this is given here, right? Uh, this is also not true data and uh, you know uh, this is my imaginary data you know uh, one imaginary data i made just to uh, make you to understand uh, this particular topic this is an imaginary data and uh, just i put species one two three it may be uh, crustaceans or mollusks or whatever it may be now look here uh, this this uh, everything is you know imaginary mm, uh, imaginary now look here and uh, now look at this uh, mds result see one is here two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve east to west east to west correctly it's moving okay east to west so the hypothesis is correct hypothesis is correct crustacean changes or continuous from east to west this is my result is telling but you know uh, immediately uh, one uh, study will not uh, uh, move your hypothesis to theory level because you know you might have studied in uh, uh, monsoon season but uh, pre monsoon season your data may tell in a different way or winter season may tell in a different way. So long-term uh, concrete study only can uh, move your hypothesis to next level, right? Now, there is a gradient, right? In the meantime, imagine your data is like this. Uh, imagine your data, your MDS is like this. some problems there okay uh, imagine uh, your data is uh, is uh, say uh, your mds result is like this one is here then 12 is here 13 is here 5 is here 6 is here 7 is here then no your uh, hypothesis is wrong crustacean changes are not continuous but you know uh, just to make you to understand in an imaginary data i made right i i put the value in that way just to prove this hypothesis and uh, that is the reason you know it is very continuous but this type of perfect data you will never get understand uh, sometimes uh, it uh, very rarely it may be possible right this is one hypothesis right to test hypothesis uh, say for example uh, Say 2, 3, 4, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
if, if it is like this, uh, no, uh, from east to west, no, uh, you know, the faunal changes are not continuous. No, uh, continuous change is not there, right? If it is like this, in your MDS, if it comes like this, you know, uh, it, 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 it is not correct. Then, second hypothesis, this is very interesting hypothesis, you know, faunal boundaries, faunal boundaries. This is a very interesting hypothesis uh, existing in, in, in our scientific community, in our community, in uh, uh, general uh, hypothesis. And uh, look here, according to scientists, as far as brachyuran uh, crab, uh, brachyuran crab uh, biodiversity is concerned, scientists are believing and this particular area some faunal uh, uh, boundaries there which means uh, this is a boundary this area is a boundary then after that you know uh, from this point uh, from this point when you move eastward the uh, biodiversity of crabs are totally changing different species are there in different number when you move towards the west, you know, the similarities are increasing. There's more uh, similarities are increasing. And this is the place which is uh, separating these two, right? This is, a, this is also an imaginary data. Imagine, right, our western coast of India is the final uh, boundary, transition zone, transition zone. And when you move westward, you know, same type of uh, species are there. And uh, this is the boundary. When you cross this, you know, different uh, type of species you are encountering in different number, which means from this point, the biodiversity is changing. So this is called as faunal, uh, faunal boundary, right? Uh, for example, if you take Maldives, uh, one zero degree channel or something is there in the uh, southern southern side. I have forgotten the name of the channel. One channel is there. And that channel is close to Adu Atal. Adu Atal is the southmost atoll of uh, the Maldives. A little above that, one another atoll is there. I think Puvad Atal. Uh, in between these two, one channel is separating. That particular channel is considered as faunal boundary. When you move northwards, you know, species are becoming more similar. When you move towards south, you know, the species are becoming different. There is the final boundary. And this is a very common hypothesis and a very interesting hypothesis found in the study of biodiversity. Okay, now is it true? And now let us check. Uh, now is this hypothesis is true? Now we are taking a data. Now uh, in the transition zone, T1, T2, T3, three places we are collecting uh, brachyuran crabs or crustaceans or whatever it may be. Then western sites, we are uh, taking three sites, W1, W2, W3. Then in the eastern side, E1, E2, E3, three places we are selecting, right? Uh, now we are taking the data. Then after taking the data and uh, we are break at this analysis, we are uh, going to primer and we are uh, representing our data. And after that, you know, MDS, we click MDS and we got MDS data. And uh, this is E1, E2, E3. This is crustacean uh, species diversity, right? This is metapineus. Uh, these are the different uh, types of uh, crustaceans. And this is also an imaginary data. As I already told you, just make you to understand uh, I made an imaginary data. This data is not true or it is not taken from any other uh, published thing also. Now look here. Uh, this is the uh, data of MDS, what I got. Now look here. T1, T2, T3, all are close together. West W1, W2, W3, close together, E1. So this is one side. This is another side. This is middle, which means the existence of faunal boundary is true. There is faunal boundary. Why? Because, you know, as I already told you, in the two dimensional space, you know, all the things are grouped together. So these are more similar. 
these are more similar this is the middle one here not very close why because you know here these two things are mixed together right so this is uh, another thing right uh, to uh, make you to uh, understand so this is how you have to uh, represent your uh, data uh, so this hypothesis is true that is distribution of crustaceans so there is final boundary right uh, now uh, look here uh, if your data is coming like this it is mixed together see west is here east is here uh, uh, transition zone 2 is here uh, so, uh, so this is telling no final boundary is there there is no final boundary this is how you have to interpret your data interpretation of data is very important right you know uh, effectively you must know or you know uh, with a preconceived idea you know when you are uh, designing your uh, study when you are designing your scientific study you know um, uh, before in your inner mind you know you have to bring a picture how uh, you know my results should be uh, you know if things are coming like this so your hypothesis is rejected right so there is no final boundary right then finally uh, you know the application of this break curtis analysis is uh, numerous and uh, it's uh, numerous in uh, so but uh, you know in a webinar like this you know it is not possible to uh, cover everything so only uh, few things i am uh, dealing in this seminar uh, the next thing is you know uh, to find out anthropogenic as well as natural uh, changes uh, anthropogenic and uh, natural uh, changes uh, to study that for example pollution uh, how pollution is affecting two sides uh, uh, for that also you can use this break at this analysis for example a pollution study means two ways you can do it you can cover uh, two uh, existing sites for example one place where factory effluents are mixed in the ocean another place it is not mixed uh, so you can cover the coral communities right uh, whether uh, the graphs are the same or not and this is a very interesting study you know uh, done after uh, 2004 tsunami this is a real uh, work uh, this, uh, this is a real work which is published in uh, uh, one very good journal, uh, Natural Hazard, which, which is having an impact factor of uh, more than two. Uh, now look here. Now, here, uh, this is, you know, pre-tsunami data. This triangle is pre-tsunami data. That is two years data, 24 months data. And uh, this is uh, post-tsunami data. Uh, five sites these studies were done you know how a tsunami has changed uh, the study sites now look here now here you see uh, that uh, pre-tsunami period uh, i'm sorry post-tsunami period all are grouped together in one site in mds plot and uh, pre-tsunami is opposed together in site one so uh, as far as you know, uh, tsunami is concerned, it has really impacted site one. Site two also, uh, pre tsunami and post tsunami are totally separated, and uh, all the sites, you know, uh, tsunami has changed, right? So, uh, because of these reasons, uh, we are uh, finding out. Then, finally, uh, let me tell you one more test is also there. Uh, called Simber test, uh, which you can uh, do using this break this I'm uh, sorry, uh, primer uh, software. This Simber analysis can be uh, used in other uh, softwares also. Now, I don't know what are the other softwares you can do that, but so many softwares are uh, providing uh, uh, opportunities to analyze uh, or do this test. Uh, Simber analysis is uh, telling you, you know, how uh, two sites uh, are, uh, how uh, two sites are similar, and what are the species are, uh, uh, to which extent 
two species are uh, uh, two sites are similar for example site a and site b are 50% similar in that 50% which species is contributing to that similarity for example you take post tsunami period and pre tsunami and uh, this can be applied for seasonal uh, temporal studies also that is time time based and space space and time okay uh, temporal studies also you can uh, uh, you can get data and spatial scale also you can get uh, get data now this is pre tsunami and post tsunami period and uh, that contributing similarity and uh, portness uh, longis spinosis this particular crab contributed 11% uh, uh, dissimilarity right dissimilarity we you can do for similarity also you can do for uh, dissimilarity also just in primer you have to select the option right uh, that's all then uh, crocia ruglosa which is uh, you know contributed 10% Leomara ruglosa. Generally, you know, when you are making a table, you don't need to give 100% uh, thing. Just 50% that's dissimilarity. How many species are contributing? Only that you represent in your table. Otherwise, your table will become too large. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is Bray-Curtis analysis. So in conclusion, as I already told you, you know that you know this is a webinar, one-hour webinar, and this is a, a statistics thing and it is very uh, difficult to explain in uh, on, in uh, an online class uh, so just i have uh, chosen the important one uh, multivariate analysis i have told you why you have to select multivariate analysis especially this anova uh, is even though it's a very good uh, statistical tool it has some disadvantages uh, so sometimes you know it may give you wrong answer in in reality there may not be, there may be changes, but your ANOVA result will say changes are there. So you have to go for break at this analysis base, there is multivariate analysis. And uh, uh, so using dendrograms, break at this analysis based, dendrograms and uh, this cluster analysis, it will uh, give a very clear idea about, uh, you know, your biodiversity. Uh, results, uh, you know, it will uh, it will give a very clear idea or that reality. What is the reality of your study sites? Uh, it will uh, give a very clear idea about that. Uh, then, moreover, it is used in so many ways to cumber two sites or uh, to cumber uh, uh, two seasons or uh, to test your hypothesis and for all the things the uh, break up this analysis based multivariate analysis is useful. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any doubt, you can ask me. Well, thank you so much, sir, uh, for the wonderful presentation. It was uh, uh, very informative and uh, we have got a lot of uh, feedbacks also in the chat box. There are a few questions too. Yes, of course. Uh, I request uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Adlin also to uh, go through the questions and uh, pick out uh, those questions uh, to the resource person. Uh, there are a few questions for, uh, in the uh, YouTube as well. Uh, one uh, Briska Renuga, she has asked a question, should we follow any particular rule in fixing the null hypothesis? And another one uh, from uh, Krishnan Kuti, I'm having one doubt what is meant by stem leaf plot. And there is yet another question from uh, Anil Kumar, uh, how can we determine the quantitative species diversity? Uh, these are three questions from uh, the YouTube. So null hypothesis, you know, it is based on, uh, for example, uh, uh, when we are uh, going uh, MDS and uh, cluster analysis, after that further you can go. Uh, whether uh, the uh, differences, if any differences are there, then we have to think 
these differences are significant or not significant. For that, you have to go for an OSIM test, right? And as I already told you, this is a webinar, so uh, uh, all the things cannot be explained within a very short span of time. So actually, MDS and break artist analysis, these two are not stopped with this. Further, you have to go for uh, an OSIM test and uh, you have to go for, uh, uh, you have to find a null hypothesis, whether, uh, for example, uh, pre-tsunami period and uh, post-tsunami period, in these two uh, periods, uh, changes are there. That is what is, uh, my results show. Uh, but is this change significant? That's a very important question. For example, now, you, are, you have made a medicine for a particular disease, uh, X, and uh, your result is telling you and that medicine is uh, really working. But that medicine, is, is it making a significant change, right? When you introduce uh, this medicine, uh, really, uh, if you are applying, uh, at least 50% of the people will be cured. Only 10% people are cured means, you know, it is significant. Differences are there. Your statistical result is telling differences are there. But is it significant? So uh, that's a question. So we are using different statistical tool. Even for one-way uh, univariate analysis also, that type of tests are there, right? So um, now in my plots, I have told you a lot of changes are there. For example, uh, final boundary, uh, I showed some changes. But is this changes are significant for that? After finishing uh, MDS, if no changes are there, forget about it. No changes, right? Finish, you can uh, write. If changes are there, then you have to fix a null hypothesis and you have to find out whether these changes are uh, statistically significant. You have to go for that. You have to go for another test called anosim test. Understand? For example, if you want to publish it in a high impact factor journal, if you stop with MDS and uh, break at this analysis, the reviewer will definitely say, uh, please uh, other uh, do uh, multivariate uh, and sorry, anosim test and give the result. They will ask you. Uh, second thing is, you know, what leaf and stem. I'm sorry, uh, I'm not using that. Uh, as I already told you, if, uh, so many hundreds of tests are there based on your work uh, we have to select what test even for uh, biodiversity uh, that uh, shannon wiener index based uh, uh, so many other tests also there uh, like hill number like so many things are there for your study what statistical methods are important that you select understand i don't have any idea about that uh, plot i'm very sorry about that and one more question. Two questions I answered. Uh, right. One more question. Three questions. Uh, I think there was another question. How can uh, we determine the quantitative species diversity? Say species diversity, uh, as I already told you, uh, generally, whether I, either it is quantitative or qualitative, you know, uh, first of all, that is the uh, beginning I told, right? Uh, first of all, you know, you go for diversity indices, Bray Curtis analysis, even as J prime, then Mergalov uh, index D, uh, like so many things are there, right? Uh, uh, in this also, so many different types of indices are there. You don't need to go for everything. Uh, what is the objective of your study? Then you go to uh, Google or uh, you collect materials and uh, especially, you know, uh, study materials of uh, tutorials of uh, diversity indices. If you give like that, some simple but a very deep uh, explanations you may get from some professors of foreign countries. And based on that, you decide. Uh, for example, um, you can go for uh, commonly break artist analysis and uh, H prime and J prime. 
how evenly species are distributed and uh, Mergolov index, Mergolov index D, that uh, those things are used. Even in my PhD thesis also, I used only these three things. Uh, especially the species richness, Mergolov index means uh, that you have to give because it's very important. For example, um, why I'm telling you is, uh, for example, you take, uh, if you count the number of millionaires, India will be more, right? Say, for example, uh, 5,000 millionaires may be there. America may be only 2,000. So that you can't say India is a rich country because compared with population, in America, 10% may be millionaires. Uh, India, only 2% may be there. Likewise, uh, this Mergalov index is telling you, you take a... Uh, uh, you, if you're analyzing a community in that, uh, if the biodiversity is high, based on the population, it will calculate. Understand? Uh, so uh, each and every uh, diversity indices, you have to read and you have to understand and how it is applicable to your study, you take a decision, right? Then after that, after that, please don't, Stop, go to multivariate analysis. That is very important. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, there, is a, there are a few people who have raised uh, uh, their hands. Uh, let me now uh, ask Dr. T. Ganesh to unmute and ask uh, this question. Yes, thank you, sir. It is a good opportunity for uh, the biostatistician across the country as well as international arena. Uh, so in this context, I congratulate the organizers to make uh, such a wonderful uh, resource persons to share their uh, knowledge. Initially with uh, Dr. Feroz Khan and who emphasized about uh, the importance of non deducts So we biologists, particularly the marine biologists, we don't bother much about uh, the absence of species or non detect not only in biological data, including environmental data. So, which uh, make a very good understanding about uh, that speaker. Thank you for that. And coming to the biodiversity related studies, I have a couple of uh, questions. It is a wonderful presentation. It is a compliment uh, to the speaker to make uh, the aspect narrowed on in a particular uh, view, specifically the multivariate analysis and its importance in uh, biological sciences. Thank you, sir. So coming back to the clarification, you showed uh, some plots. Yes. You know, uh, A, B, C, D. And you also demonstrated how the breaker dissimilarity indexes will be useful to frame and understand uh, the, the similarity of uh, the sites. Suppose if you want to calculate the species diversity indices for the all the plot, will it be same or uh, different, number one? And similarly, you also showed uh, the MDS ordination pattern where it can be used for studying the distribution or the directional movement. For example, you also showed on hypothesis about uh, the crustacean forms are increasing from east to west or west to east. And from the MDS, we understand that it is moving from east to west. And uh, I believe that in MDS primer application option, you have the option like flip vertically or flip horizontally. If you are using that option, the hypothesis will be different. So how do you justify this? And also remember, MDS is, it is a two-dimensional ordination pattern. The real picture can be visualized only through dendrogram. You please add a come, uh, your notes about how we have to interpret our data, whether it is based on MDS or cluster, or this can be justified you know, the kind of direction they are moving from east to west or west to east. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, it's a very 
interesting question even now, now also just now i realized you know when we give flip vertical or horizontal you know the result may change uh, of course i you know the first question you know the biodiversity indices as i already told you two factors are uh, you know uh, important you know the especially that uh, evenness as well as uh, abundance uh, how evenly species are distributed and uh, how abundant each species are you know in between two habitats based on these two factors only most of the uh, biodiversity indices are uh, working and uh, uh so it depends uh, how answers change it is based on that you know uh, evenness and abundance uh based on that only you are getting results as i already told you based on the objective of your study you select the indices and uh, coming for the second question uh here uh, you have to come to a conclusion this mds ordination uh uh you have a table in the table or uh, especially you know whenever you are giving a, a representing your data your first figure will be the abundance data right in the different sites uh, how many um, uh, crustaceans are there and all the things you give abundance data first of all uh, so figure one will be uh, like that or you will uh, give a table in all the research works first uh, our table will be like that our figure will be like that then compare the figure and mds right when we compare this two we will get a very clear idea you know whether west side more species are there accordingly uh, you can uh, do your flip vertical and horizontal also understand according to the table which side uh, you have to uh, you know vertical option you have to select or horizontal option right this is a very good uh, suggestion even now also you know Uh, based on the table i have to use this option uh, this idea i got it through your question only thank you so much uh, thank you sir thank you sir uh, there is uh, another uh, raise hand from dr uh, mohammad tamimul ansari uh, he was our resource person in the previous session as well uh sir you are not audible and sir sir you are yes. not audible fine ah yeah yes okay uh, thank you thomas uh, to given opportunity and uh, i thank both the speakers particularly uh, the statistical part uh, in these two things uh, so dr t ganesh is asked already two questions whatever it is i plan to ask and Uh, my question is sir i need to ask one question uh, from you uh, you used metric multi dimensional scaling or non metric di multi dimensional scaling that is the first question because why i am asking if you are using metric dimensional scaling you need you need not to be change the value whatever you want okay but if you want to be use the non metric dimensional scaling particularly on primer software because we used to use the primer even now we are using seven uh, so which method you are using first question my first question uh, second question is if you uh, use the cluster analysis uh, what you showed in your graph in the first slide uh, the changes between the plot 1 and plot plot a and plot d is species 1 and 2 is more or less similar but uh, you are the similarity level is totally different in your figure Uh, compared to your table and uh, your figure so if it is possible please explain that thing that will be useful to manage uh, in future what we are doing not this one the earlier one This one, right? Earlier, one, earlier. Next yes. one, next one. Yeah, next one. Breakfast. Next, next. Not uh, the previous one. Next one. 
the first uh, dendrogram what you sold yes this yeah. one right yeah here the species 1 and species 2 it is appeared in both plot a and plot d but uh, when you so even the numbers is not changed is more a same 7 and 3 but uh, in your figure it's representing its wrong way what i feel so here species a and b are uh, more different you know here it is uh, species a both are uh, the distance is very far away so yeah, this i i understood in m asking from uh, your table Yes, See, your similarity or dissimilarity, whatever, whatever you are taking, similarity or dissimilarity. But the species one and species two is from plot one and plot four. Uh, sorry, plot A and plot D, it's same. Even the number as well as species. No, Only species difference are... in species three. No, no. Say species four is in uh, plot seven, but it is not here. Yeah. Uh, so total no, different species, asking, you know. I'm not, I'm not asking about plot B and C, plot A and D. A and D, D. A and D. Last asking. Yes, here two are seven three seven three. Here two A and D, right? Yeah. Even you can take similarity or dissimilarity, but. Uh, i don't think so it is the the representation in the break risk similarity dendrogram is right uh, actually like, see we are uh, we are giving uh, the input value right uh, we are uh, yeah. giving we are giving the input value and uh, the software is giving the answer so i don't think it may be a mistake uh, So that, I don't think, yeah. So okay, uh, just we are giving value and uh, it may be. It looks like more similarity plot A and plot D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sample A and yes. sample D. Uh, uh, maybe around seventy per eighty percent similarity is there. It looks like what 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 I feel here. Uh, we saw we saw only one. Uh, yeah, only one cluster, but. Uh, in this graph, it must to be two. A and D is one uh, section, uh, one group, and then B and C one group. Then it will be clustered. That is the reason I ask you use metric or non-metric. Okay, okay. See. Oh, uh, may I... may I come in? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, actually, I I guess that this is based on the similarity uh, breakerty. A similarity index. If you look at this yes. A and B, it is totally yeah. contrasting sides. Look at the value. A and B it is showing zero. Zero means there are no common species present in both sample A and B. That so is, that it, is it, it clearly shows that it is based on the similarity index. Yes. And uh, uh, look at the value of uh, C and B, which is having very high similarity, almost seventy-five. Uh, so these two should be a single cluster. All right, and this is based on non-metric. Yeah, that is the point I ask. Because if we we use the metric data, it will be it cannot be changed. That is the point I ask to the speaker. But uh, that will be a very good presentation from Dr. Anand Jai Kumar. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Sir, can I ask one more question? Yes, yes. Regarding the MDS, uh, the previous graph, sir. Yes. So this is Dr. Mari Muthu from Ames University, Malaysia. Uh, it is a curious to ask. Uh, now, along with uh, multi-dimensional scaling, only the cluster break uh, uh, at this cluster analysis and multi-dimensional scaling, can we say that significantly the sites are different, the plots are different, the species are different numerically, along with the graphical illustration? Graphical illustration will show you only the Qualitatively, there is a difference, but statistically, with that, can we say that? And that's what you know. After that, you have to go for yeah. announcing, announcing. 
announcing okay okay further request is needed yeah further request is needed okay so with that we can't go for a publication sir we have to add announcing yes yes that's a must that so is must graphical alone is not enough nowadays we go yes for, uh, yes yes yeah. so because you, yeah unless if changes are uh, there uh, then you have to go for uh, just yeah thank you sir thank you it was a enlightening presentation sir nice sir okay thank you sir one compliment to this uh, question Mm. uh there is one option in primer latest version you can use mm. sim pro mm -hmm. similarity profile if you are using this option cluster okay, itself you can find significant different groupings this can show in a red marking red clustering so okay, that is sir. i wanted to highlight here so this shows that uh, there are significant differences between the clusters and that is separated by the sim pro analysis and okay. uh, sim per all i mean uh, anosim also we can use as sar set thank you sir yes it's a good information uh, in fact now the last 10 years i'm totally dealing with uh, taxonomy only larval uh, taxonomy and so to be frank uh, the new developments of the this software primer uh, you know i am ignorant but any of this is a very good information thank you i think uh, thank you sir there is another question i think from uh, professor uh, uma mageshwari madam you can unmute madam uh, uma mageshwari madam you have uh, used the hand raise option if you have a question you can unmute okay i think uh, she does not have a question any other questions uh, uh professor adlin or dr bg sir uh, you want to pick out from the uh, chat box or yes, so there are few questions in chat box uh, jeevan prashant he asked up to 100 meter and between 100 and 200 meters the plankton distribution is different it is true but some planktonic form migrates vertically and some zooplankton migrate to the depth of 200 meter also also to avoid day heat and migrate to the surface during the night hours does it affect the distribution data uh, actually you know in the biodiversity uh, study Uh, this is a very big problem uh, problem that is the reason you know uh, our uh, your data uh, short term data will never help you and uh, moreover plankton also you have to take uh, data uh, uh, from every four hours like that in in our university also one group they, they studied uh, this particular thing every four hours they collected and uh, not only plankton even uh, the uh, uh, crabs also Uh, in particular season some crops may be available another season it may uh, may not be available so one full uh, year study is required not only that you know so many other factors also uh, contributing uh, uh, towards the accuracy of your work uh, for example uh, certain species are very rare and we may miss those uh, species and uh, that case you know uh, more quartets you have to uh, do that if you uh, um, less using less quartets only if you analyze less area meter uh, uh, square area if you analyze your answer will be wrong and uh, moreover even uh, that you know the person who is involved in sampling you know uh, for example Uh, in the crab one uh, sampling method is there you know uh, like fortunate crabs they are fast swimmers you can't catch so one hour effort one hour how how much they are catching uh, so this uh, catch uh, that method name i have forgotten right uh, uh, so for example if you if your eyesight is uh, high and uh, if if your concentration is high certainly you will catch more crab another person uh, person's concentration is level or eye, uh, level is low or eyesight is low he may get uh, another uh, he, he can collect only few samples 
like when you take a biodiversity uh, you know uh, data so many factors are influencing not only migration uh, like this type of uh, several even uh, the uh, collectors uh, psychological setup also is affecting so that is the reason you know for uh, biodiversity data you know long term long term data and uh, you know spatial wise you know more areas should be covered you know then only you can your data will be strong and that is the reason when you go for very high impact factor journal you know uh, uh, you know you have a, a very strong data sets then only they accept your papers like one year or two years data and the more places uh, collected if it is a plankton study you know every two hours collection three hours collection and that is also long term this plankton another problem is not only vertical and uh, this type of migration you know it is totally seasonal also some seasons one plankton may be there another season another uh, plankton may be dominant so a minimum uh, one year study is required right uh, okay shall we have one more question last question yes okay no problem a same participant have asked another question difference in final atom weights in this three zone is it due to the influence of environmental factors uh you mean are you asking from my powerpoint presentation this three sites is it from my powerpoint or uh, i think it is from your powerpoint presentation uh, i uh, i totally told you it is totally imaginary just to, just to interpret uh, mds how to interpret mds you know that is the objective of my lecture everyone should understand how to interpret whether there's a trend or whether there is no trend so particularly i manipulated uh, i made my own imaginary data to uh, bring a particular trend uh, so it is totally imaginary okay if uh, some similarities are there certainly some environmental factors uh, must be favorable to those species uh, you know uh, for that you know you have to go for another analysis also you know that canonic, uh, canonical uh, correlations methods uh, environmental factors you have to include uh, with the uh, abundance data uh, so you have to go for another uh, higher level thing right so what i am teaching is totally incomplete my lecture is totally incomplete lecture okay so so many things are there right so if environmental factors are uh, influencing uh, then you have to uh, uh, take environmental data and you have to go for another analysis okay thank you so much sir uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful presentation and uh, we had number of questions uh, that were asked by different participants uh, both from the zoom as well as from the youtube so it was a nice discussion that we had so uh, we thank you so we come to the last part of uh, today's program uh, it is a vote of thanks uh, the formal vote of thanks so uh, let me uh, now uh, propose the, the formal vote of thanks adult outside i would like to thank uh, the correspondent of our college for uh, giving us permission and uh, uh, helping us to make all arrangements uh, to conduct this international uh, webinar on this uh, occasion and uh, i also thank uh, the principal of our college uh, dr k paul raj for uh, his motivation and uh, he has uh, given uh, an introductory talk uh, in the beginning of uh, the workshop so i thank uh, dr k paul raj uh, the principal of our college on behalf of uh, uh, the iqac and also on behalf of the department of uh, sorry department of uh, zoology thank you sir and uh, i should uh, thank uh, the two eminent resource persons uh, the first uh, session was uh, handled by dr m firoz khan uh, he is uh, working in the department of uh, department uh, at uh, c Abdul Hakim College, uh, Mary Bisharam. So I thank uh, Dr. M. Firoz Khan for the wonderful session that uh, was carried out in the 
uh, beginning of uh, the workshop and uh, we had another fabulous uh, session uh, by uh, dr a anand j kumar from the department of uh, marine biology of uh, king abdul aziz university saudi arabia uh, so he had uh, spent a lot of time uh, to discuss uh, with uh, powerful uh, powerpoints uh, giving a lot of illustrations and uh, we also spent a lot of uh, uh, fruitful time in discussion as well so uh, it was a very good uh, learning uh, platform uh, for uh, the participants uh, who have gathered here so on behalf of uh, the department of uh, zoology and research and uh, the internal quality assurance cell of our college i would like to thank you sir thank you so much welcome thank you thank you so much and uh, i would also like to uh, thank uh, the uh, head of the department of uh, zoology and research center dr gd bg uh, he is a person who has taken a lot of pain uh, along with uh, the webinar convener to uh, arrange this uh, workshop uh, in a very fruitful way um, he was so enthusiastic about uh, this uh, international workshop he used to uh, call me every day and inquire about uh, the statistics and other data so that shows his uh, enthusiasm in uh, undertaking this kind of uh, online programs so he is a very active member uh, uh, in the department uh, in the college okay he holds the position of the vice principal also so i thank uh, dr uh, gd bg the vice principal and uh, also head of the department of uh, zoology on this occasion thank you sir and next uh, i thank uh, the uh, wonderful convener of uh, this uh, workshop and uh, it is uh, professor radley nanicha uh, so she has uh, she carries out everything very meticulously and uh, she does lot of planning also and she did lot of hard work uh, unlike uh, the previous webinar he did uh, more hard work for this webinar too and uh, on behalf of the internal quality assurance cell and uh, on behalf of all the participants uh, who are gathered here i thank uh, our webinar convener uh, professor uh, adley nanita thank you madam and uh, now i would like to thank uh, all the staff members of our college uh, uh, for uh, their uh, support in this uh, webinar uh, in this workshop this international workshop and also the members of the internal quality assurance cell of our college and uh, i very specially thank all the participants of this uh, international workshop uh, i i could see that uh, usually people ask for feedback feedback at the end many people come for certificates but uh, only at 5 o'clock i can see a uh, uh, few uh, uh, queries regarding the feedback link so it shows that uh, they were mesmerized with uh, the wonderful session of uh, the two resource persons so uh, i am very happy and uh, thankful to all the participants for showing a uh, lot of interest and uh, that was uh, evident in the way you have asked uh, questions uh, adding to uh, the discussion part so it was a wonderful uh, session so i thank uh, all the participants of uh, this international webinar on behalf of the organizing team thank you so much and uh, especially i thank uh, each one of you all the members uh, who have gathered here thank you one and all thank you so much uh the feedback link is posted uh, in the chat box uh, you may click uh, the feedback link you will receive the certificates in uh, uh, a day or two mostly so uh, don't uh, ask for clarifications regarding the certificates uh, for one week so if you don't receive it we will respond to that later and also uh, please fill the Uh, entries very carefully because uh, what you type will be there uh, on your certificate so uh, very carefully type the name uh, your uh, your details right name of the college and all those details very carefully 
Thank you. Uh, Dr. Biji, sir, if you want to add something. Uh, sir, you are not audible. Uh, so this is a small announcement for the members who have joined in uh, YouTube. Uh, you have to click on that particular link uh, for the feedback. I have now pasted the same link again without those uh, uh, message. Kindly click on the link. So without that message, I have uh, posted the uh, link separately. So you may click that maybe because uh, the next uh, word joined with uh, the link, it was not uh, working. So kindly uh, click on the link which I have posted. If you have already clicked the link, okay, uh, check whether uh, there is a letter or something added to that.
so i think all of you have submitted your uh, feedbacks uh, feedback form so uh, we are going to end the meeting thank you so much